And today, I'm going to talk about the future. So before we talk about the future, let's go over the past first. I'm going to start my talk with uh, talking about the history, the evolution of three different things. Transportation, retail, and AI. For transportation, everyone knows that we, as a human society, we start our movement by walking. And then, with the invention of horse-driven drawn carriage, and also bicycle, eventually we have cars. Because of the cars, our transportation becomes significantly better. That's why we build tons of highways, hundreds of thousands of miles, so that we can go to place A to place B easily. That's the evolution of transportation. But if we talk about retail, that's another aspect. People start doing exchange of goods. People doing in the ancient times. People start like, every, every day, uh, one day of the week, everyone will gather in the same place. If they start exchanging goods so that they can, they, can, they can get what they need. And then things get better, not only just one day of the week. Now you can shop every day through a counter. You can go to a counter, ask what you need, and then uh, the, the staff will pick up the stuff uh, from the back side and then give it to the object, to the things you are buying. Eventually, people realize, why do I need to go to every store? I need to go to a, uh, a bakery store to get something, I, and I need to go to another store to get something again. And again, also, I, why I need to ask? That's the invention of supermarket. You can go to a store with many, many different things, and then you can get what you want. Eventually, you just go to cashier to, to check out. Now things get better. You have more freedom. You also is getting more efficient as well. Save you a lot of time going to different stores. Also, save you a lot of time uh, to ask people to serve you. Eventually, also because of the transportation improvement, everyone has a big car, and we have highway. People realize why we need to have the supermarket in the downtown, right? We can go to the suburban area, which can offer a bigger warehouse. For example, right, everyone knows these days, Costco offer a retail warehouse club. That you can go there, you can sort a lot of objects, you can use your car, use highway transportation, then you can get the things out uh, to your house at a very low cost. Eventually, people realize that, OK, it's even better if you can shop online. You don't even need to go to the store. That's where the online shopping comes in. With the click of the mouse, you can order anything from like, websites such as Amazon.com, eBay, and then you can buy things, and will, the package will stick to your house, maybe even within two days with the, a lot of price service. And in recent years, we also witnessed another change on, on mobile shopping. It's no longer you need to go to the desktop or your laptop anymore. With a single click of your cell phone, now you can order pizza, you can order all kinds of things. You can see the history of the retail also evolved significantly in the past, uh, uh, past 2,000 years. OK, that's about retail. How about computer and AI? As we know, with the first invention of computer, uh, of a computational device. You cannot even call it as a computer. It's in ancient China. There's something called a uh, 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 which is not a digital computer. It's just a mechanical thing that helps you do the calculation. Then the first digital programmer computer, programmable computer comes out. And also later on, we have the first tooling complete machine uh, there. Uh, with uh, the invention of the computer. Now you can start programming the computer to do a lot of cool things. And eventually, we have expert systems like the IBM 360, that the first generation of AI researchers start to use computer to programming uh, artificial intelligence software so that the computer can do something very smart. Now, with uh, the after the computer in inventing, now we can start with a lot of very smart algorithms. For example, we have the chess player algorithm like using Deep Blue, IBM Deep Blue, so that you can play chess with people and actually win any human being in the world. And then we have the IBM Jap uh, uh, Watson to play the Jeopardy game to do answer questioning better than any human being in the world. And recent years, we already see a lot of uh, improvement about robotics. 
we can build human shaped robot or as anim animal shaped robot to move around to do all, a lot of very important tasks for us. <laughs> and then we also invented computer vision. <laughs> Computer vision was started in MIT with a humble beginning, just trying to have the computer to see the world, to recognize a few building blocks. And then we can do things better these days. Now we can do face recognition. We can recognize everyone's face and even recognize the identity of each person. And we can do 3D scanning of the city. We can use a car driving around or use a drone to flying around to scan every street in the city to create a digital copy, a 3D digital copy of the real world. And these days, things get even better. You can do scene understanding. You can recognize the object, recognize pedestrian, recognize cars on the street in real time uh, at uh, more than 25 frames per second in order to support a lot of other applications. And in recent years, what is the most exciting thing is about the age of deep learning. Because of deep learning, deep mind build a program called AlphaGo to basically play Go as, uh, just like chess uh, for with, with human being and actually be all the human being in the world as well. Go is even harder than chess because chess is just a, if you use a search algorithm, deterministically, it can search all the space and be human being. But go the search space is so, so much bigger. It's not possible that you do exhaustive search, um, exhaustively trying everything. That's why I found go use deep learning technology to really build, change a very sophisticated neural network to outbeat human being in playing Go. And we also see like language translation. These days with the machine, it's really easy. Everyone can translate from any language to another language using neural network, like the current neural network called LSTN. is very good at translating uh, English to French as well as any other two languages. We also see a lot of winners of object recognition. For example, you can really do high resolution sensing about the, the street and then recognize there's pedestrian, bikers, color in red, as well as uh, uh, vehicle color in blue. So this kind of scenario is only possible with uh, deep, uh, learning, uh, deep learning using a lot of data in the back end. So a, a quick summary of what I've been talking about. We have three different lines, right? We have been talking about the evolution of transportation from carry to car to highway, as well as details uh, from the very beginning, very simple market exchange into like, the mobile stage that you can order anything on your cell phone. And the AI also starting from a humble beginning with a very simple, very bunky computer to a stage of the art that you can recognize objects, you can do translation. All these things separate to each other. But what's exciting is that in 2018, this year, finally all of them meet together. Because these days, only in this year, the first time in the human history, we're able to build a, use an AI to drive a car and use it for doing that like, delivery for retails. This have, these three guys have nothing to do with each other until this moment. With the AI technology, we can build a self-driving car that drives to do grocery delivery, food delivery, all kinds of delivery autonomously for everyone to drive, uh, to, to, to serve everyone's life. For example, this is a very simple scenario. We can start ordering using a smartphone, download app, and then you can do the ordering of food and grocery. And then a self-driving car can just do it autonomously to drive to your house. And then right outside your house, not only you can pick up the grocery, the food you order, but you can even do online window shopping, on site window shopping. You can, the car comes with a window shop as well. Then you can decide what to, order, what to take in real, in real time on the site. So here is a video demonstrating the concept. Right? You can really have a lot of fun, uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying staying at home. And then you, with a single click of the, of the app, you can order it. Or before you go home from work, you can order something. And then at the time you arrive home, exact timing, and then the, the autonomous driving vehicle will carry the stuff you order, like either food or grocery or other stuff. At the moment you arrive at the house, you can pick up your grocery, also you can do window shopping, decide whether you want to buy some add-on items or not. Oh, 
So this is really convenient. Without even going outside your house, the autonomous driving vehicle can do the delivery of grocery and food. So you can buy some eggs, uh, all other add-on items. So that this is really a way to convenient way. Uh, it's very safe because it, with the high resolution sensing on top of the vehicle, with the, all the computation power, with the, all the recent development of deep learning and computer vision, we are able to build a solid technology that can do these kind of things at a very, very low cost. So you can really spend time on more valuable things, like watching games, with the, play with the friends and family, instead of spending time just stuck in the traffic going to the grocery store. And there are many different form factors. A vehicle like this is just one of the many form factors. Like for university campus, for high school campus like this, you can actually have a smaller vehicle. In some sense, it's no longer a car anymore. It could be considered as a robot, carrying stuff from one place, from connecting the retail to the consumer. Well, we can with a bigger minivan or other kind of vehicle, you can do multiple order at the same time, so that you can reduce the cost of the delivery. So, uh, that's this kind of service create a huge disruption, a huge revolution to the society, to everyone's life. For the consumer side, it's going to significantly change the way how we live. Uh, that's one side. But for the retailer side, it's also creating a lot of new opportunities for business. Let's talk about consumer first. Consumer has a lot of benefit for this kind of technology because it's going to reduce you a lot of time. Like statistics show that it's going to be probably reduce you 40% of the time wasted on the road for shopping, for running errands. A lot of people, they, they are driving, not that because uh, you enjoy driving. When people talk about autonomous driving, they always think about, okay, I, now I can replace the human uh, driver with a machine driver. But that's just one aspect, save you some time of driving. But the more important thing is you are not driving in the sake of driving. You are driving because you go someplace, because you want to do something, right? And statistics show that 40% uh, of the time you are doing something is you are buying something from grocery store, from the restaurant. So if we do that for you, you don't even need to spend that 40% of the time on the way, either you are driving or not. This is significantly make your life much more valuable so that you can spend more time with the people you love and get anything you want, anytime, anywhere. So that's for the consumer side. For the, but for the retail side, there's also a huge business. Like for example, affordable autonomous delivery will significantly increase the market size. Why? Because it's so low cost that everyone, all the consumers are going to start using it. If uh, people do market survey so that if the on-demand delivery cost is low enough, 80% of consumers will use this service. So Morgan Stanley recently published a research to show that right now the delivery plus, uh, the current food delivery market is about 30 billion US dollars in US. But if we are able to use autonomous driving to reduce the cost for delivery, the market is actually going to grow from 30 billion to 220 billion dollars in US. So for business side, it's really a huge opportunity to have all new kinds of business. This is a beautiful feature, but the big question is when, when this will happen. In five years, in 50 years, predicting the future is always hard. Right now in 2018, we start a pilot of autonomous delivery, but it's a, a small pilot, right? People will ask when it will come in the national scale. So I'm going to answer this question by looking at the history again. As we know, that history of car actually very interesting, very relevant as well. So here is a New York City, uh, 1900. The Eastern morning, when the huge parade of horse-drawn uh, carriage, I'm going to play this question, where is the car? Now you can see that exactly there's one car here with all these other horse-drawn carriage. Now fast forward 13 years. Now I'm going, I have to ask the reverse question. The same New York City, the same Eastern Morning Parade, and now I have to ask the reverse question, where is the horse? 
It's very difficult to find a horse. It's actually exactly only one horse in this parade. The history already tells us, you see that within 13 years, we went from almost all horse to almost all cars. The, the, the adoption of vehicles, the, the adoption of uh, cars, is only taking 13 years. And at that time, it's an a, a iron that is a technology adoption at a much slower rate. But this day, we have much faster technology adoption rate. So this is one example in 1913. Now, let's for, fast forward to 1980. In 1980, uh, the, phone, the iconic phone company, AT&T, asked McKinsey, one of the smartest uh, business consulting company in the world, this question, can you predict how many people are going to use a cell phone in 2000? McKinsey sharpened his pencil and worked very hard days and night, eventually come up with a number, 900,000. And what is the actual number? 109 million people use cell phones in, 20, uh, in, in 2000, it, which is 120 times bigger than the predicted number. Again, this demonstrates that the technology development is always much faster than people expected. Then how about retails? For e-commerce, we can also see the number from Amazon. Amazon starts with a, a, a very humble beginning with a very low revenue. And then in 2017, getting to a whopping number of almost 200 billion US dollar revenue. Within 20 years, we go from almost nothing for e-commerce to almost everywhere for e-commerce. Again, this demonstrates that the idea of the technology being adapted is much faster than we thought it is. So my bet for the future is going to come much sooner than later. But if that's the case, it's better that we, can, we should start engaging everyone for this conversation. Because the future is coming, the future is sooner than we expect it is to be. The impact of uh, this autonomous delivery is going to have fundamental impact of the way we live, as well uh, with all the business have been done today. It has going to have a huge impact, then, so that we have to ask all these questions. How should we build our city? How should we build our shopping mall? How should we uh, build our business? How should everyone sitting here for the future? Like, what is your career? This is going to be highly dependent on this future. So it's better that we start working together, engage everyone to plan for a future, to plan to meet the grocery run of the future. Thank you very much.